Hello and welcome to a drive-by code session. This is part three of the how to make a programming language series. Um, if you missed the first two, I recommend that you go and watch those before continuing on with this video. Um, this, this episode is going to feature nearly JS, which is a parser generator uh, with which you write a grammar um, and then you convert the grammar into a JavaScript parser. Um, and Wikit and I have been researching how to build parsers and various parser generator tools like nearly JS. And we found this to be one of the best for, for the, at least in the JavaScript universe, the JavaScript ecosystem. And incidentally, nearly is also a NPM staff pick quite a high honor. Uh, so let's get into the code. Um, so as usual, Ykit wrote the code and I'm just going to replay what he did and explain. So the first thing he does is initialize an NPM uh, project or, or Node.js project by making a package JSON file using the NPM init command. Then he installs nearly and you can see nearly there in the list of dependencies. Now he starts out writing a grammar. And uh, what grammar, what kind of grammar is this? Well, this is in computer science lingo. This is a, this is a context free grammar. CFG. And a context-free grammar consists of a number of production rules. So what you see here is a production rule, which consists of a left-hand side, an arrow, and a right-hand side. Uh, this rule defines the symbol that's on the left-hand side. This is the this is a symbol. On the left-hand side, there's one symbol. On the right-hand side, there can be one or more symbols. This one happens to have one. Um, this symbol is a special symbol. It's, it matches some characters. <clears throat> uh, and this is syntax from the nearly style of grammar. Uh, this is saying a number is one or more. This plus stands for one or more. It's one or more digits uh, or characters between zero and nine. Uh, and you might recognize this plus from uh, regular expressions. Uh, however, this does not have the full power of regular expressions. So you, this cannot do everything that regular expressions can do. Uh, this colon is a syntax or an operator that allows the plus sign that follows. So with this is enough to have a valid grammar. So we can ask nearly, or the nearly C command, which stands for the nearly compiler. We ask the nearly compiler to take this grammar file and output a JavaScript file, which we'll call mypl.js. If you look at mypl.js, um, it's actually a fairly short file, but this is a JavaScript representation of this grammar file. Uh, we're going to put this compile command into the scripts definition in the package JSON so that next time we can just do npm run gen parser to rebuild the myplj.js file from the grammar file. Next, we'll make a parse.js. Um, and this is how you build a parser with nearly. And these are in the instructions on the nearly website. So you can also use that as a reference. So first you require the nearly library, then you also require the mypl.js that was generated in the previous step. And then you plug them together like so to create an instance of a parser. Once you have a parser, you feed a string into it like so, and then the parser will have a results property on it that contains a result of the parse. So let's run this file and it we receive the results of the parse. And this the result of the parse is actually will end up becoming your AST 
um, as we uh, defined and described in the last episode. Uh, for now, this AST looks like a very, very nested series of arrays. Uh, we'll fix that just a little bit. Um, if you change the input to ABC, then the parser is going to barf at you because the language or the grammar that defines the language as it stands does not support uh, the string ABC. It only supports digits. Um, WhiteKit is going to improve the error message. Um, so if you, this is a error message a little more easy to read. It's saying unexpected A because the language itself does not understand the character A. Uh, if we switch it back to a number, then the parser is happy. He'll, he'll, he'll make it more explicit that the parse succeeded when it does now. And now next thing is let's support decimal numbers. So at current state, the parser is going to barf at decimal numbers because again, the grammar doesn't understand the character dot. So we need to make it understand that. So let's call this number, let's call that digits. And we'll say a number, redefine number as some digits followed by a dot and then followed by some more digits. So now the grammar is able to support parsing decimal numbers. So we'll regenerate the parser and rerun parse. And now, now it, the parser is able to parse a decimal number. Uh, next, let's support variable assignment syntax. So let's say a variable assignment is first an identifier, which is like a variable name, and then colon equals, and then a number. And what's an identifier? Well, we'll define it on the next line. An identifier is zero or one or more uh, alphabet letters from A to Z. So uh, now the parser should be able to parse uh, variable assignments, although there's a mistake here. So if we regenerate the parser first to bring this grammar into this myplgs, so the parser is updated, and then we'll parse, and this there's a mistake because um, as we saw, a uh, assignment operator has a colon in front of it, and uh, YKit forgot about that. So fix that, put a colon there, and now the parser succeeds. At this point, the top level grammar is variable assignment. So this parser can actually only parse variable assignments. Let's say this program can parse variable assignments and numbers. So this is how you do that. This is new syntax for the grammar syntax. First we had the arrow sign and now we have the vertical pipe, which means or. So this is saying the top level input of, of or what it means to be a program in my PL is a program is either a variable assignment or a number. So let's regenerate this parser and then we will uh, try to parse it and although it succeeds we have a little problem. Numbers currently can only be decimal numbers, can only have a decimal number. So we'll also use the bar to say a number can actually be a decimal number or it could be just be an integer. It's just represented by one series of digits. And with that fix, we regenerate the parser, parse, and now we get some values in the parse. Okay, let's, let's go to the next part, which is now that given we have a grammar, we have a grammar that I mean, this is a very simple, uh, uh, this is a very small subset of what a whole programming language would be. But uh, each of these symbols, we want to represent it in the AST, the abstract syntax tree. And we are going to use JavaScript to do that. So Nearly has built in JavaScript interoperability. And you do that by, by uh, writing a curly bracket and then percent sign and then close this JavaScript block with percent sign and curly bracket. And in the middle, you can write some JavaScript. 
Um, you can even use ES6 or ES7 syntax if you like. Uh, so what you want to write inside these brackets is a JavaScript function which takes an array of matches and returns anything you want. It, return, it should return some value that you, that you want to use to represent what it means to be the symbol that you're defining with this rule. So in this case, uh, data will represent this guy. There, there's only one symbol here. Um, it'll be array inside of an array because the, the inner array is an array because of this plus sign, which means one or more. So you end up having uh, for, the, for the string one, two, three, for example, you'll end up having an array of like so. So this is data here. This is data. Oops. Yeah, that this guy is data. So what we're saying is we we yeah, there's only one match we know that. We're just gonna get the first one or the zeroth one to get this guy. So this is data zero. And then because we just want these digits joined together, we'll use array that join to join them together. And the res the full result here should be the string one, two, three. And that's really what we want for the digits. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Actually, I'm going to skip over uh, some of the things, go to the next part. So, oh yeah, we ran that and then we, in, in the, for, to represent digits, we just get the string of the digits now. How do we want to represent numbers though? Well, we can say to represent the number is the same array of digits. So this digit is, again, you'll get an array. And then in this array is whatever digit returned will go into this array, uh, which currently is something like one, two. So we wanna sort of unpack this array so that uh, the thing that represents the number is just a string uh, rather than wrap inside of an array. So we'll do that. Um, however, there's a shorthand to doing that uh, because this pattern is so common, uh, nearly gives you an ID function to, which means simply that unpack the first item of an array. Um, so, and if you generate that, you see that the number of nested arrays is another level less now. So we're gonna use this ID function for each rule where the right-hand side only has one symbol. So like so, I'll do a little bit of in formatting here. And now the top level uh, of the parse tree is just the digits now. However, uh, we haven't correctly supported uh, decimal numbers yet. That only ha that only works for the ones where the right hand side has one symbol. So how do we handle that one? So let's do a decimal number. And currently, the decimal number is represented as an array of the parts. Okay. So we'll write a function here that takes the data array, and now in this case, the data array is gonna look like this. It's, it's gonna be an array that has three parts. So now, so we're going to say, uh, I'm gonna take the different parts in the array, um, concatenate them together with the dot. I already know the middle part is gonna be the dot, so I'm just gonna hard code the dot. Uh, concatenate them together and use the number function to parse them into a JavaScript number. And while we're doing that, we might as well do that for the integer as well. So let's regenerate the parser and parse. And now we actually get an integer representation in the AST tree instead of a string of digits. And test that for integers also, and that works as well. Now what about the 
variable assignment. For a variable assignment, we actually like to represent that as a JavaScript object, uh, something like this. Let's see how to do that. So again, we have a function that takes a data array. What is it gonna return? It's gonna return an object. Um, and again, this data got this data is going to be an array where its members are the matches uh, on the right hand side here. So, <clears throat> so we're gonna say the type is gonna be the string var assignment, and the var name is gonna come from the zeroth element of that array. The value is gonna come from the last, uh, the second element from the array. So let's regen the parser and parse, and now the AST represents this var assignment uh, with this object now. Cool. At this point, we're about halfway done building this parser, so I'm going to take another episode to finish up building this parser. So that would be the next one in this series. And then after that, we'll start building a JavaScript generator, which takes the AST that was produced by the parser and generates some working JavaScript. So uh, I hope to see you in the next episode.